Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and today we're going to take a look at cameras in our ongoing Hacks and Hacks Flixel tutorial series. Now, don't worry, it's a lot more exciting than it actually sounds. Now, a camera is a viewport into your game's world, and where that becomes directly relevant is when your world is larger than one screen. Now, one thing to be aware of, um, in this example, I'm actually going to show you creating a camera, but there's actually a camera created for you by default um, in FLXG. Uh, so we're going to be doing something slightly redundant in this initial example, but then later on we're going to do a split screen example where we'll create multiple cameras and you will get why I did it that way. But do be aware that by default, Hackspixel creates a camera for you the same size as your screen window. Now that is something that's really important to understand right up front. A camera and the game resolution are not necessarily the same thing. A camera is a viewport within your game. So you can use it to uh, zoom up the contents. It doesn't have to match your game's resolution. Now we talked about this earlier on. Your uh, game's resolution is set in your project.xml file here. So you see on a desktop, um, uh, desktop setting, you have uh, 640 by 480 is the default you can see right here. Then if you're under HTML5, it t loses the resizable, well as on uh, mobile platforms, it's gonna be whatever size the screen resolution is in the first place. So resolution and game camera are not the same thing, but by default, they will have the same dimensions. Um, all right, so without further ado, here is our example. A very simple example I've already created for you. Simple code here. What I've done is I've loaded a large background image. This image is many times the size of the screen. In fact, um, here it is. So it's a large scrolling map in the background. It's about 4,000 pixels long in size. And then we've got this jet that we're going to draw over top of it. So that's all that I've really done here so far. I create, uh, I load and rotate the jet. I load and create the background. And I add both of them to our scene. Um, of course, adding the jet after the background is important so that it's actually drawn on top by default. And then finally, in our update, I'm moving it at 300 pixels per second. So we actually have some update going on. Now let's go ahead and run this guy. There you go. So you see, and our jet is now off the screen. It's still running, it's still doing its thing, uh, but we didn't actually follow it. So now let's actually look at creating our camera and we'll go from there. So what we wanna do is create a camera that will follow that jet sprite as it scrolls off the screen. So we're gonna need another variable up here. Oh, I should match my code exactly. Um, coincidentally, this uh, example, all the source code is available in Game From Scratch. I will link that uh, down below. Uh, and as I was, I was telling you earlier, this part is a little redundant because there is a built-in camera, uh, but we'll be adding a second one later on, so that's why I'm going ahead and creating one from scratch. So there you go, we've got our Flixel camera import, uh, our camera variable. So now we just come on up here and we will add our camera. So camera uh, equals new FLX equals camera. Uh, and our dimensions, so it starts at 0 and 0, 640, 480. So we're actually matching the screen resolution as we're doing this. Uh, so now that we've got our camera, we can also do the set the, uh, the background color if we want. So the clear color for the camera, uh, that is set with BG color. So if you wanted to have green or whatever, but in this case, our image is gonna take up the entire uh, background. So there's no opacity, there's no transparency in our background image. So uh, that value does absolutely nothing in this particular case. Um, now what we need to do, so in this case, remember I told you FLXG already has a camera built in. So we're just gonna go to camera and we're gonna reset it with our newly created camera. So our new camera is now in control. There's no reason why you can't just go ahead and use FLXG.camera if you want. In this particular case, you don't need to create the additional camera like we have here. Um, let's see, and the last thing I wanna do is take our camera and set its target. And it can be any game object. In our particular case, we want it to be the jet, like so. And that should be about it. So now we'll go ahead and run our code. Uh, name collision, all right. Now let's run that. All 
All right, I'm a bit of an idiot. Cameras. You can have multiple cameras, so that's why it's called cameras. And let's see where we're at now. Oh, and that is not... Um, all right, not my finest hour there. It's not a method, it's a property. All right, so now we should be set up and running. My code should be right, finally. And there you go. So now what you're seeing is our um, camera follows our jet as our jet scrolls along in the world. So the background is static in this particular case. The jet is what's moving and the camera is moving to track it. Now we're gonna run into something in a second and that's this. So what we just did is went beyond the bounds of our background. And obviously you don't want the camera to do that. You want the camera to stay uh, within the, the dimensions of your game world. So we're still following our, um, our jet sprite here is still moving uh, off and off but our world ended way, way off screen. So what we wanna do is actually set some boundaries for our camera. Uh, fairly simple to do. So we'll just go on back up here and we'll go my camera dot set scroll bounds rect. And that's zero and zero. So we're the starting point, 640 wide. And our height, we are going to get from the background and that little change, now when our cam when our jet gets to the edge of the screen, the camera will no longer follow it. Now the jet's still gonna potentially be running forever and ever and ever. You still need to add some logic to your uh, sprite code to make sure that if you care, um, otherwise that's gonna just keep running off the screen. But our camera at least now is going to be smart enough to stop at the bounds of the actual screen, like so. Uh, so that's pretty much the gist of a camera. Now let's show some of the cool fun stuff that we can actually do with it. Uh, we'll do these one by one. So we're gonna do these all down here in the update. So first things first, uh, let's show you uh, zooming. So you can zoom the camera in and out. So we'll do if FLX, sorry, one second. Uh, FLXG dot keys dot just released dot up. Camera dot zoom plus equals 0 0.1. That's uh, magnitude, so two uh, it would be two times zoom, so uh, this will be 1.1 times zoom, or 10% increase in this particular case. Um, if lxg dot keys dot just released dot down, if camera dot zoom is greater than one, Zoom minus equals 0 0.1. All right, there we go. So we'll go ahead and run that. And now if I press the up arrow, we zoom in. And the down arrow, we zoom out. So pretty easy zoom control in your game. Uh, very easy to add as you just saw. We can also do some special effects pretty simply. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do another one based on the key press. Oh, that likes G dot keys dot just released dot, uh, what did I use? S. And what we're going to do is do a camera shake. The intensity seems to be very, very high. This is a number I played with quite a bit. Uh, and we'll do it over one second. So we're doing a one second shake of 0. 0, 0.01 intensity. And we'll go ahead and run that. And this would be like if your character got hit or, you know, it's just a visual cue for something happened. So if you hit the S key, there you can see the shake. So as you can see, 0 0.01 is a very pronounced shake. And obviously if we zoom in, it still applies like so. So that is a super simple effect. We can also do um, color flash effects pretty simply too. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is a quick color flash if we press A. So if FLXG dot keys dot uh, da, 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 what's it just released a camera dot flash pixel dot util dot color red zero point five. 
So now if I press the A key, we get a red flash on our camera. And that 0 0.5 says half of a second. Now we can also do quite a bit more advanced um, things. We can actually apply filters onto our um, we can apply filters onto our camera as well. Now this actually requires a couple of steps, and we're going to be using something that is um, uh, dependent on our platform. So it's actually a Flash um, code. So this will only actually run in Flash, uh, but I did want to illustrate it to you uh, all the same. So we're going to apply a blur filter. And we're going to need a bool to control it. So var blur. So bool. So and we'll start off by default. Uh, blur equals false. Oops. All right. So now what we want to do is when we press a given key, now what did I use in my other example? I used the escape key. All right, so come on down here and we'll do another chunk of code. So if flxg.keys.just released, or just released, escape. Uh, we'll toggle our blur status. Our, our bluer status. Uh, so if blur bar filter equals new blur filter camera.set filters. Uh, this is an array, so we just go filter like so. And then Otherwise, so if blur is not enabled, we need to get rid of it. So camera.set filters. And an empty array. I think so. All right, so now let's go ahead and run that. So I hit the escape key, and there you see we're blurred. I hit the escape key again. We're not. So I can even, and we can mix these things together. So if I can press A, we get our flash. Uh, S, we get our shake and our blur, etc. Uh, so some pretty cool stuff there. You've also got a little bit of transitional stuff. So we can also go, uh, let's say down here. So if our jet goes off the screen, we're going to fade to black and quit our game. So if jet dot oops, jet dot y is greater than background. So if we exceed the bounds of our background, camera dot fade, and black. So we're gonna fade to black. It's gonna take two seconds to do it, and then when we are done, we're going to go ahead and call this function, and this function will. Restart the game. All right, now I just need to figure out. I think I need a, that, and I'm good. All right, so go ahead and run that. Oops. All right, what did I do wrong? Cannot skip null on nullable argument fade in. All right, one second. Ah, yeah, I skipped a parameter. All right, so it's after 2.0. There's a Boolean value. Ah, so what was that for? Fade in. Fades from a color, false fades to it. Oh, okay, so basically by passing in false here, we're saying fade to black as opposed to from black. So we'll go ahead and run that. So I just missed a parameter there. Our error should go away. Our code should now run. And da, 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 da. And we get to the edge of the screen. We go off the screen. Two seconds fade to black and start over again. 
So you can see there's some really cool special effects. Again, we've got the escape for the blur filter, the A for the flashing of the screen, the S for the shaking of the screen. So there's a lot you could do with the camera. Uh, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. Pretty powerful stuff, pretty easy to implement, pretty fast. So that's cameras. Now one last thing that's really kind of common is to want to do split screen. That is to have uh, basically two viewports into our world. What we're going to do is create this guy as half of the screen, and then we're going to have another one that stays completely static. And this process is actually incredibly easy. Uh, really all we need to do is come back up here where we create our camera. So my camera right here, and we're going to create a second camera. Like so. And what we do instead here is we start the sky up halfway across our screen. Our screen is 640 by 480, so 320 is half of that. And then our width is going to be still the same height, but half of the width. So basically we're creating a second camera at 320 by 0 by uh, 320 by, so positioned at this location of this dimension. So basically half the screen width at half of the screen width across. Uh, now, of course, we're going to have to change the first camera uh, so that it is smaller. So here we just change that to 320, starting at 0 and 0. So we've got our, our first camera is now half of the width it was. And now our second camera is um, the other half of the screen width. And then finally, after our reset call right here, we just need to go flxg.cameras. That's where that plural comes in because you can have more than one. Add. Uh, Oops. My ordering here is getting confusing. Like so. I'll go ahead and run that. And there you see, on our left hand side, we have our uh, normal scrolling fun guy and on our right hand side you saw our sprite is well off screen and we have a static camera there so if we had you know a second player sprite we'd obviously focus the second viewport on the first one um but really that's that's about the extent of it that's uh dealing with cameras in uh in uh hacks flixel pretty cool topic actually you can do quite a bit it's pretty powerful uh, but it's consistent with how everything else has worked. Now do be aware, once again, I want to reiterate this, this whole creating of a new camera here was not necessarily, you, if you just have a single camera and it matches the dimensions of the screen, you should just go ahead and use the one that's built in and created for you. So there's no need to do this reset. I did this for illustrative purposes only. Uh, and again, you saw earlier my little error showed up. Well, that's the downside for them creating that initial camera. That's why we had a name collision with uh, the flxg.camera class when I just said, when I called it camera. Uh, so that's why I renamed it to my camera. So that is not a necessary step. Uh, anyways, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, please do, of course, click like. Um, we've got all kinds of game development tutorials here on this, tutorials here on this site. Uh, so if that sounds like your thing, uh, please do subscribe, check out. Hopefully you've got some stuff here that you like. Uh, and stay tuned. I should have a tutorial up very, very soon on doing sprite animations. Now, once again, of course, this is part of an entire series. Link the series at the end of the video. Um, hopefully you're, you're finding it useful. All right. See you all later. Goodbye.